Scripture reading today, John 20, verse 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciple returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw no well, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that she had said these things to her. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the Gospel of Matthew, the earth shook. I've always thought it was hokey that the earth shook when Jesus died in the Gospel of Matthew. And it shakes again when the rock is removed from the tomb. I've always thought, okay, you know, it's a little too much, a little too Hollywood. But it plays on two levels. One, in Roman and Greek culture, there is a God who controls the lightning and the thunder and who makes the earth shake. And to those adherents who question the divinity of Jesus, their ears would perk up. The earth shook. The rock split. Jesus was God. And the earthquaking also works because, too, what a metaphor. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything. We are shook to the foundation. We have to rethink everything. Death, life, what is possible. Jesus is going to rock your world. Jesus makes a way out of no way. There are people here who can testify to that truth. Just as the earliest witnesses of Jesus' res resurrection. For Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, 
We looked at the passion of Christ from the vantage point of John. Each of the Gospels were written uh, from their own perspectives, oral, oral traditions that were passed down to these different communities. About the passion narrative, the days that uh, telling of when Jesus was arrested and killed and rose again. Today we have read two of those versions, Matthew and John, about his resurrection. Uh, who actually went to the tomb? According to John, it was Mary Magdalene by herself. From Matthew, it was Mary Magdalene and Mary. It doesn't say which Mary. There's lots of Marys. Uh, it was it Martha's sister, Mary. But we know it was Jesus' mother and another Mary. In the Gospel of Mark, it's Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. In Luke, it's Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and other women. And they go to the tomb for different reasons. In the Gospel of Matthew, they go to see. They bring no spices, no tinctures. They're not going to anoint the body. It's already been done. They go to see. Jesus has predicted that his death and resurrection at least three times in the gospel. They heard this, these women, and they believed, and they went to see. Resurrection is possible. Do you believe this? Resurrection is possible. Look for it. Pray for it. And act accordingly. In the Gospel of John, Mary Magdalene uh, hangs out after the other disciples have returned to their homes, and she mis mistakes Jesus for the gardener. When she realizes it's, it's him, she calls him teacher, which again, uh, it doesn't sound radical to our ears, but back then it would have because rabbis did not teach women. And here we, we throughout the Gospel, we see Jesus teaching women. They were his disciples. And she is the first apostle. The, an apostle is someone who is sent out on a mission, and Mary is the first one sent out. Go and tell. He also says to her, don't hold on to me, because she must have grabbed him. When, I, and you can imagine all that's going on through her, her head, like, is this real? Are you real? Or simply just to show affection, to give him a hug. Oh, my Lord. We can understand this. Always, you know, I, I am looking forward to that hug when I get to, the, to go on to be with our Lord and Savior. Throughout John, we have this call to relationship with God made known in Jesus Christ. In his understanding, that's what it means to be saved, to make our home with him, to abide with him, to cling to the vine. But here we have Jesus say, do not hold on to me. One of the commentaries that I read said this, as wonderful as Easter is, we cannot hold on to it, meaning Easter morning. Uh, Easter morning should be celebrated with lilies and trumpets, but we can't hold on to it. Monday is coming. We need to go, go into the community, go into the places where people are and need to hear us say, I have seen Jesus. He is alive, and resurrection is possible. Let me tell you my story. And if Mary's experience holds true, they need to hear their name. Jesus says in the gospel, you know, the, my, my sheep will know my voice. Mary recognizes Jesus when she hears her name. It's one of the reasons that when people file forward for communion, I say names because years ago in my first church that I served, I said to someone, I, Betsy, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And she told me later, it was as if God was saying to her, Betsy, for you. And it was, and from that moment, she recommitted herself to being a follower of Jesus Christ and being active in the community. Later, because I know the story, there was conflict in the church and life got really hard and it got really messy because that's life. But she knew that God is alive and well and working in the world. At Easter, it's, it's a simple story, but it's such a, it's such a broad story of all that we celebrate. But in Easter, we know that we threw our worst at Jesus and he rose with forgiveness and peace and love in his heart. 
We know that death is no more, that we do not need to live in fear, that in our living and in our dying, we belong to God. And at Easter time, we hear our name spoken gently. And we are called to believe. Let us make our home in Jesus and carry his message into the world. In Jesus' name, amen.